All right. A lot of this should be review from last year. I'll kind of I'll, I'll explain the assignment here in a minute. Uh, but we'll be going into the Enlightenment, uh, also known as the Age of Reason. You should be copying this into your guided notes, um, which is still on the first page. Uh, what is it? What is the Enlightenment? And all this stuff should be review for the most part. All right. So uh, review. Uh, from last year, I know in Global Issues, whether if you had me or Mr. Radigan or Mr. Lawton, these are all things that we taught. Uh, Ms. Aikens, same thing. Um, you know, this all stems from the Renaissance, Scientific Revolution time period. Before the Enlightenment, again, this, is, this part really is not in your notes, uh, but before the Enlightenment took a uh, hold of Europe, uh, you had an area, you had an era known as the Renaissance period. Um, this, which will ultimately lead to the Scientific Revolution. The, to science, technology, um, people started to invent things that started to um, really explain the world around them. Um, and people had a lot of questions, space and um, how motion worked, um, and they wanted they wanted to find answers for themselves. Um, so, what was the Renaissance? Uh, this was the golden age of art and literature, where people you know had more access um, to books and to read and to knowledge. Um, they wanted to learn how things operate it's not, instead of being told how things operated. Um, so what was the scientific revolution? Scientists began to question traditional beliefs. Number, uh, the church and the king had all the power and all the knowledge back then. Uh, so these scientists started using technology to question those old traditional beliefs that were taught by the king and by the church. They wanted to find truth for themselves. Um, so they used observation, experimentation, and using science um, to prove or disprove things. So you have the Renaissance, which will lead to the scientific revolution. Scientific revolution will lead to the Enlightenment. All right, so now in your notes, what is the Enlightenment? So what is it? Um, it's also known as the Age of Reason. The Enlightenment grew out of the scientific revolution. Um, oh, so this part you don't need to write down either, I'm sorry. Um, if scientists could understand the physical world using reason, then reason could be used to discover natural laws and shape human nature. So I think we can kind of move on from that. All right, so what is it? Now, the thing that I have in orange here that's highlighted is kind of is the area of what you're going to need. Um, so using modern science to challenge accepted beliefs towards government and society. So the Enlightenment focused on government and societal issues like human rights. Um, again, they question the monarch. Monarch is a king. Uh, in the church. So these people will question the absolute monarchs and church's power. Uh, again, they want to try and find, try to find truth for themselves. Um, they've questioned whether the king should have divine right of rule. I mean, that's God-given. Uh, they also question the lack of rights that they should be, that they should uh, that they are provided. Um, so they, they really were questioning the king's power. Um, so the Enlightenment philosophers. So again, think about this. These beliefs are not going to be very popular amongst the church, and they won't be very popular amongst the king. So a lot of these philosophers, as we'll learn, will be arrested. Their literature will be banned. Um, it'll spark revolutions around the world, um, where people will start to question whether or not that's the king and church's power is to basically censor things. Um, now, guys, we're still seeing this today. We're still seeing things being censored, and we're still seeing things being banned books being banned. Um, so, you're, you know, these same questions are still being held true today. Um, and people are very passionate about it. So when and where did it begin? It began in the early 1650s, all the way through the 1800s. Uh, it began in Europe, then will spread to the Americas. So as more people leave Europe to come to America, uh, more and more people will, those ideas will begin spreading to this new land. So it starts in Europe, then eventually will go to America. All right, so here's what you're going to do. Uh, in Google Classroom, uh, which you're obviously getting this slide on here, um, so your slide should, should look like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to spend the next few minutes in learning about, and really learning or slash reviewing um, some of these Enlightenment uh, philosophers. So John Locke, you're going to read a little excerpt on him. So what are his natural rights? If I'm reading this, this being the green, what should people do to their government? What should people do if their government is here. 
tyrannical. There we go. Sorry, fixing this on the fly. So basically, if they're if they're not given a whole lot of rights to the people, according to him, what should they do? Uh, and then you're going to create a Twitter handle. So if you were if John Locke had a Twitter handle back then, what would his Twitter handle be? Um, then you're going to go on to Dahab. Same thing. You're going to read this excerpt. Uh, what is his? So you're going to read the instructions for yourself. Type in your answer here. Describe his view on human nature. Create a Twitter handle. You're going to do this for all the leaders. And then eventually you're going to get to this. There's going to be like all matching. They're going to be descriptions um, for each philosopher. So you're going to erase, write name here, erase that. And you're going to type in which of these philosophers, Wollstonecraft, Montesquieu, Rousseau, Voltaire, Hobbes. Um, you'll use each one once. And then finally, you're going to, uh, for each tweet, include a hashtag. You can add another philosopher. So up here, when you use all your at symbols, um, for your Twitter handles, you're going to apply that right here. Um, so philosopher's name, Twitter handle, write a tweet. Um, you know, use this. Absolute monarchy is the way to go. I am the state. Um, this is from King Louis. So absolute is the king. So if you were a philosopher, how would you, if you're one of these philosophers, you can, you can choose which one you want to. Um, how would you respond to that? Um, and the same thing right here. Your principal. The dress code will be enforced. Stop complaining. Hashtag deal with it. So again, you're going to use three philosophers here that you just learned about. Use their Twitter handles, and if they were around, what tweet would they would they send? You can you can use hashtags and have fun with it. All right, so that is it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Adios.